Hi gentlemen, this is the second video in a series of four videos on Miriam Weiwei Lo's poem Home. In this video, I will analyze section one of her poem. One day I will find it. It's really interesting in this poem that she never actually refers to the word home. She refers to home here as it. We know that this is home because of the title. Here we have future tense, and this future tense shows that she doesn't feel at home. I'll follow. I'll follow the smell of food. This is sensory olfactory imagery, the, the imagery of food, um, the smell of food. Fried ikan balls, roast lamb, mangoes. These fried ikan balls are a very, um, a very Malaysian ingredient. They're those little anchovies and um, they're quite salty. Roast lamb we associate more with um, as, as a sort of Western food and mangoes, well, they can go with either. The next we have this sound imagery, the auditory imagery. The sound touching down, the sound of water touching down on sand, stones, mud. We have that listing there, that accumulation to place emphasis. Here we have a bit of uncertainty um, coming through in the use of perhaps, which is low modality, combined with the code for entry will be in Braille. There's this mystery. The Braille is, of course, the language that people use if they're vision impaired to read. Little, it's like little bumps on paper. So home is coming across as a mystery, as this uncertain place. And I must stand in a dark room at midnight, weeping and running my fingers over two stone tablets. So this weeping, it's a negative image. She's upset, she's sad. And the two stone tablets are um, biblical allusion to Exodus 34.1, which is, of course, the Ten Commandments written on two stone tablets. So we're starting to get some biblical imagery coming through. It will be in my mouth a thin wafer of honey. So this is biblical allusion as well. This is to Exodus 16.31, where God provided bread for the Israelites, which tasted like wafers made with honey. God is providing for her in her time of need. He is giving her comfort. He is giving her sustenance. This, though, is contrasted with the bitter salt taste of my husband's sweat. I'm not quite sure why she's referring to her husband's sweat there. It's quite a jarring sort of image that comes through. We've got this thin wafer of honey, this positive image, and then we've got the bitter salt taste of her husband's sweat. I'm not sure if this is about heat or um, if it's about hard work. He's He is a pastor, so he's a leader of a church. Maybe um, the weight of that um, and, and serving his community uh, his church community is is quite a heavy burden, perhaps. Uh, then we've got, I will see it, I'm sure, yellow as the wattle in winter and brown as the grass under snow. Again, we have a contrast. Here we have colour imagery and similes. So we've got the yellow wattle, which is an endemic Australian image. And we've got it contrasted with brown as the grass under snow. So the, the grass under the snow has died. Here we have a skyscraper 50 stories tall contrasted with a small picturesque cottage. So I think this really shows that the physical building does not matter in the concept of home. It's not the important thing. Home isn't about the building. It's about the people. I will be there alone and with everyone I love. Here we have this paradox. She feels alone despite being surrounded by everyone she loves. And I think this is because she feels like she doesn't belong. She's torn between her Eastern and her Western heritage and she feels like she doesn't fit with either world. We also have the anaphora of it will be carried through this section, which places emphasis on what home will be in the future. 
Here we have a tonal shift, an accumulation of no, to show the negative aspects of this world that are not part of home. There are not these negative things that no one eats while others go hungry, no lying awake wondering which woman or child in what sweatshop has made these pyjamas I wear or these sheets on the bed or this rug on the floor. This cumulative listing shows the extent of goods made in eastern sweatshops and this is the terrible cost of, of having cheap goods. People, people suffer. Um, we, we may have the money to pay for these goods but we, we would rather get everything cheaper and because of that people have to suffer. I will not have to lock the door. So in, in this place, in this home, this unlocked door symbolizes safety. So overall, this section of the poem is about um, the contrast between the East and West and um, the difficulties the poet faces in trying to consider what home is and um, what home should be. So um, it's not about a physical place to her, it's about a sense of belonging, um, a sense of belonging to a place, feeling like you are home, but, but struggling to identify with a particular place because of her complex history and heritage and culture.